Sancho, oh brilliant! Magnificently struck by Jaden Sancho. All pedestrian Dyer and Spurs' latest reality check is administered without any mercy. That blocked. Morrow! Brilliant! Soft strike. Kane getting it in. What a chance! Yeah, his goal crucial in the end. Let's have a look at uh, that second half then. Uh, the Spurs were unrecognisable uh, from the first. Pedro Porro uh, set them on their way. Got a smart finish in the end this, Robbie, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was. I mean, it said uh, Spurs got a lot of people into the, into the box. You look there, there's, there's five in, in the box there. The first half, there's probably one. Um, great force touch and you know, great finish from outside of the, the foot. The keeper, had, the keeper had no chance. But the difference was that the people in the box were yeah. causing problems. Harry... In the first half, was a bit. He was always 10, 10, 15 yards outside the box. So look at the difference there: three, four, five players in the box with the first half. There's only one or two, and it's a, you know it's incredible, incredible finish. I'm sure Peter's going to have something to say well, about. You say the keeper had the, no the chance. Interference. What is no, the keeper's view? I, I think the, the the quality of the finish is irrelevant there. So so where Richarlison is, is infringing, he's in that space. You cannot. It, it it doesn't matter that he's behind. You still feel that he's there. So you you you. Mm-hmm. We'll see you think he's going to save that? That, that, that? I think that's completely irrelevant. Really? Yeah, he's Why? outside because he's in. He's infringing on, he... on, on De Gea's space play. I, I think. I mean, I don't. If I don't know the rule, but precisely, there are too many times where a ball. So if you take Richarlison, if he's in front of De Gea now, or maybe on on the line of where the ball is now, mm-hmm. then uh, the referees and VAR don't give it as a. Can I give you the letter of the but, law? The but, player is behind the goalkeeper, so the goalkeeper does not know he's there and not in his line. But he is, you can see, he's looking at him. He looks down and if you, he knows he's there. So, so he would always be infringing. But, and, you know. but knowing he's there, Peter, he can still, he's, in, he's in front of him there. He can still dive. He's not, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not on the left side of him where he, he, can't, he has I've, to dive over him. He's, he still can dive. Yeah, that. See, I'm not going to teach you how to uh, how to score goals and be in, <laughs> in positions and all that. I've been in that position, and it it it, it has an impact that there's a player there. He is offside. Can we? I, I, I'm, I'm, they I have don't, far too much protection anyway. The goalkeepers. Can, oh, we, come can on. we resume? Are we, are we going that way? <laughs> My God. We'll come back to it. I promise you. We need to resume the debate. But uh, Oliver Skip <laughs> is waiting to speak to us live uh, at the Tottenham Hotspur <laughs> Stadium. Sorry to interrupt these three legends, Oliver. You're worth it. Um, well, what a second half. What was that like? Yeah, I think um, the second half was much improved from us. Um, we knew we needed a reaction, not only from uh, the first half, but also from uh, the weekend. So, no, it was a much better second half. Um, we even had chances to win it um, towards the end. Uh, Skippy, how are you doing? It's uh, Robbie here. Hi. Um, you know, obviously, the, the, the first half, the, the reaction, that probably that the fans didn't, didn't want in terms of going 2-0 down uh, after losing against Newcastle. So, uh, at half-time, what did uh, Ryan say? Are, are the players, did the players get hold of each other and have a word with each other to, you know, to galvanise you guys? Uh, yeah, there was words said at half-time, but also I think first half, uh, yeah, we didn't play as well, but we had a few chances of ourselves. So, we were confident if we upped it 5-10% that we would get a few more chances and then... Luckily, second half, we managed to take them. And, yeah, it was much better second half. How important was it to give the supporters that, Oliver? Yeah, it's been a difficult last few weeks. Um, no, it was important. We're not getting carried away because it's only a point and we wanted three. Um, but, no, it's nice to, to give the fans uh, more of a performance, especially second half. And Ryan back in charge. I mean, he's, been, he's had a taste of it before. What, what's he like to work with? Uh, no, we, we know what Ryan's about. Um, He's tactically very good and he created a, an energy in the group and he just told us really that he had belief in us and as players you always like to hear that and um, no, he's, he's a coach that we can definitely get behind and yeah, he'll improve every one of us, I'm sure of that. And five games to go finally, how important is it, irrelevant of the points and the, and the league position, that you finish positively with a bit of momentum now? Yeah, it's crucial. Um, Especially, we've got five games and we'll be taking, I know it's a cliche, but each game as it comes. And we know that if we put in performances like that second half, we'll be on the right track. And um, no, it's definitely an important end of the season, no matter 
the points, like you said. So no, we'll be looking to put in more of the, the second half, especially. Appreciate you talking to us. Well done, second half. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Bob. Uh, that's Oliver Skip. So are we, are we settled on the goalkeeping debate before we move on? <laughs> are we friends again? Or? Well, me and Alan are, yeah. <laughs> We're agreed the keepers get too much protection and it was never offside and it, should, so, it was a good goal. Yeah, well, I still think that uh, at least it's something that needs to be talked about because it is, it is taking away an opportunity for the goalkeeper and, 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 and especially on those occasions where he's in front, where, where, where they're not being given because they're deemed not to be uh, infringing on the goalkeeper, but they are. They are and, and uh, there should be a very more, more clear rule. What you can argue here is, of course, that uh, Richarlison was pushed in there. Mm. It, it doesn't change the situation, so maybe that would have been a penalty. But I still think he's, uh, he's in the way. And you can see De Gea is upset. He knows he's there. Uh, and I, I, mean, I don't know if it stops him from diving. It, I, he probably couldn't have saved it anyway, but that, I think that is irrelevant. Okay. It's the principle of him being in his space that makes him offside for me. Straight away. We've got a referee that, that could sort of put us right. If we had another hour on the show, absolutely. <laughs> but we haven't. So we're going to go back down the other end of the pitch at 2-1. Forster was beaten. Fernandez hits the bar. If he scores, completely different outcome. Yeah, absolutely. And he should have scored. I mean, I think he just got too much on it, you know. He, he, I didn't think there was, a, there was any reason for him to put that much power into it. If it's just a little dink. I mean, it did, it's really good play to get it there in the first place. And instead of getting the power behind it, I just think it needed that little lift over the goalkeeper. Rather than that, it's just a little dink that he needed. And it go, that goes to 3-1, absolutely. It's a completely different story. Big moment in the game. Mm. That is the next moment, actually. This is uh, the next attack after they've conceded that goal that we've just spent so much time on. <laughs> uh, so, that, of course, it would have changed the game. And then you can, you can move on to the next big situation, which is, uh, of course, Eric Dyer's header. Mm. And before goes, we see that, Son had that, a really good yeah. chance as well. So oh, yeah, Son and well, Dyer yeah. in quick succession. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Rashford gives the ball away here and then, you know, scores on a, on a quick quick counter. Uh, Harry's in this space a lot a, a lot today. You know, great bit of skill here to get by two players. If there's anybody that you expect want in this, in this position uh, is, is Son. We've seen it over, over the years. This is the position that he loves. Um, could he took a touch? Probably not. He was right to hit a fourth time, but he just doesn't... Hit on, hit on target, but you'd, you'd expect, bit, yeah, he scuffed, he scuffed a little bit. Maybe it was a little bit, bit high bounce, but you'd still expect him to, to do better. How's Eric Dyer miss this? Alan? I don't know. I really couldn't tell you how he misses this. I mean, again, it's chalk and cheese from what Spurs were in the first half. The way they move the ball. Look at the men in the box Bodies they've got again, now. Yeah. Look at them all in there. Oh, I don't know. I don't I, know how I, really. I don't know about you. You come out rush when you yeah, watch that. He was much better than me ahead of. Is this was a situation where you just let it hit you? I think he tries because the pace is already on the ball, mm. and he's kind of swings, he swings his head and his neck, but kind of changes the the, the uh, movement of the ball. So if he just lets it hits his forehead, mm. it goes on, it goes on target, and you've got a more of a chance to score. There's not even the excuse to say it came quicker than because he can see it. He's got mm. a great view of it coming right from the cross. There's no one within three or four yards of him there, so he's got time to think about it. It's an absolute sitter. Yeah, it's one of the misses of the season. But perseverance paid off in the end, particularly for Son. Yeah, 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 he did. Yeah, listen, he was. Uh, he probably didn't have his best games, uh, uh, Son. But you know, you know what, what Son does. He'll keep going. He'll keep fighting. Uh, he'll always get in these positions. Harry again in this position that we spoke about. This is a wonderful ball mm. from Harry. Harry Stops it again. Yeah, ha, ha, well, they, <laughs> you know, sometimes in them situations, yeah, no, they I know, are, I, I, I know. are the best ones. But when you're in here, Son knows that Harry's always going to find you because he's brilliant. In these situations, and then he had to kind of lift it over the keeper by, by bouncing it into the ground. Um, that's a good finish for me. That I, he, he scuffed it. I think that's done. That's done on purpose. I would ask the question of Man United there: Where are the two fullbacks going? So, so we've just seen the uh, the Eric Dyer chance, and we've seen the goal, and that is also an example of what the challenges and the issues that Manchester United have at the moment, uh, with of course Varane out and, and, and Martinez out <coughs> uh, defensively. Uh, we are a bit vulnerable. We are uh, Dyer's header. It, it, first of all, there's no pressure on the cross. You should stop the cross already at, at, at birth, really. You should never let him cross the ball there. And then nobody follows in. Nobody follows Dyer in. And, and because the, um, I won't say Lindelof is a, is a fullback, but he's sort of half a centre, half half a fullback-ish. And, and um, Luke Shaw is a fullback. 
they're drawn towards the ball. You know, they're not drawn to to marking spaces or or, or players, and that gives that opportunity. And and that second goal, I, I don't know what Malasia is doing. I don't know if we can see that again, but the ball runs p- just straight past him to to Harry Kane. Just looks at it, and you think, oh, you you just come on. You have to make some kind of, kind of impact. You come up to do a job. You know, he takes Van Bissaka off, which is a bit. I'm not sure why he does that because defensively, he was really really good today, really really good, and. We're two one up. You don't you don't change it when you know it's not that bad. And you take your best defender. The positives for for the Tottenham there, sorry, Peter. The positives from Tottenham there is that the first half they had nobody in the box. Yeah. And we said about the centre halves at times one just go and release. You're playing yeah. against one, one striker. We've seen it there, Romero in the box uh, uh, as, as stages. Mm. Dyer there, oh, yeah. which he, obviously he should, have, he should have scored, but yeah. at least they're getting in the box. You had four or five people in the box. That's the positives that, could, that they can take from, from uh, the second half, where the first half you had a stages. Harry was putting balls in the box, or uh, Richarlison was putting balls. And there's one person in the box every time. Yeah, that didn't work for them today, Richarlison, no. did it? No. It was react- actually, they became really, really good when he, when he came up. Kulisevsky came on. Yeah. He was, Kulisevsky was very, very good today. And let's see what the interim manager back in charge for the second spell thought about it all in particular, that second half. Here's Ryan Mason. Yeah, pleased with the rea- reaction at half time. I thought the second half we were, we were outstanding, to be perfectly honest. Um, the character we showed off the back of what happened Sunday and then going, going 2 0 down at half time as well. The, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy um, and I hope, I hope our fans and, and everyone can feel that, that we were a team today, we were together and we run, we fought for each other and I thought, to be perfectly honest, in the second half we could have scored a lot more. What did you say at half-time? Because they came out a different side. Listen, there was many things, but listen, obviously they caused us problems in the first half, but I felt we caused them a lot of problems as well and we had our moments and sometimes in football the goals change games. Um, they scored a good goal, their first goal, and it just kind of made everyone feel a little bit like, you know, off the back of what happened the other day. There, there was a lot of maybe some doubts in the players' heads, but listen, they kept going. They, I thought they were brave, they were aggressive in the second half, and we played a lot of the game in their half of the pitch, so um, that's very pleasing. And go, having gone down two goals, I mean, it, it would have been easy to let that run away. Yeah, listen, I've, I've, I've said it to the boys in there, I've heard a lot of, a lot of talk about maybe lack of character and all that, but there's no, those players in there, I know, I know I've got men, I know I've got men that, that when they pull together and act as a team, they, they're a very, very strong team and, and that's my challenge to, to inspire them and, and get inside of them to make sure that every time we, we, we go, go on to a football pitch, um, we act as a team. And the crowd joined you? Absolutely, and uh, listen, I, I was a player here, I, I know what it's like, I know what it's like when we've got the fans with us, um, we have to get the fans with us. Um, that goes without saying. And I was I was very pleased with with the feeling and the energy inside the stadium because I felt like they was with us the whole game. And um, like I said, that's very pleasing. Does this give you a platform now to build? Listen, I, I think one of the key things for me is is I said before the game about a reaction, but but most importantly, being together, being a team, and. In football, you can win, you lose, you draw. But the most important thing is that, that we're united with each other. We're, we're together. We act as a team in every single moment. And um, my takeaway from that is that, that I've got a team in there that are willing to fight. Well done. Thanks very much. Thank you. Can you bring that much unity between now and the end of the season on the back of that second half? Yeah, you can. I think uh, Ryan can. I said he's, he's very passionate about the club. He's a, he's a very good coach. Um, the players like him, respect him. People around the club like him. Um, so if there's anyone who's going to be fighting for them, uh, they'll fight for him. There's no question There's no question about that. And we've seen it in the second half performance. Um, I agree with him what he said about the fear. It looked from the start of the game, he still had the hangover from, uh, from the Newcastle game. And rather than going out against, against uh, Man U, he kind of sat back and thought, well, we don't really want to concede too early here. And that was, that's what did happen. Second half, they went out. Uh, the reaction that, pro- that probably Ryan wanted from, and, and the fans wanted. And they, if they gave a good account of themselves the second half, now can they do that for the remaining games of the season? Sunday is going to be another massive test for them against Liverpool. And it's never easy going there against that uh, Anfield with, with that crowd. So, but certainly drawing the game, getting something out of the game, it's got something to hold on to now. OK, here's the other side of the story. Manchester United, of course, were 2-0 up at half-time. Here's their manager, Eric Ten Hag. 
Eric, do you feel like you've thrown away a victory there? Is that a frustrate, frustrating night? Yeah, of course, eh, when you're 2-0 up, and, um, yeah, then you are a little bit disappointed than you when you draw. That's quite obvious and uh, we have to take that. And we had the chances uh, after the 2-1 to score the 3-1 which we didn't, and then we concede a goal. But after all, I think in this week, I think 2-2 is a good draw. You were brilliant in the first half, but finishing was deadly. Did the edge disappear after half-time? Yeah, we had to score the second goal, and it came just before half-time, but to be honest, also, they could uh, make the equaliser just before half-time, just before we scored. And yeah, we were not that good. Uh, I think over 90 minutes, also not in the first half, we didn't play brilliant uh, for me. And we were up 2-0. And then we had to, I think, after half time, we had to score another goal. We saw you using your substitutions. Were you, were you unhappy with what was going on in the second half? Uh, you saw uh, we, uh, the same um, after half time. Uh, it was the same as before half time. And we lose control and we conceded the goal. You could see him coming and I already prepared the, game, uh, the, the subs, but uh, it was a little bit too late. Do you need the side to be cleverer, more streetwise in these kind of in, in situations, manage the game? Yeah, of course, manage the game. Um, keep, keep the ball. It gives so much easy balls away. Uh, have a good defending organisation, which we didn't always have. And the, with, the, with the goals, it was quite obvious. We didn't block the crosses and you have to be proactive there. Uh, we have to come out to block the shot uh, with the second uh, long ball and we didn't squeeze out. Um, it was so easy for them and then caps coming and it was so easy to score a goal then. In the bigger picture, Newcastle have won tonight and it makes that top four battle more complicated. You've got Villa next as well. Yeah, it's another game and we need the energy and we have to be ready for Sunday. Uh, we know that. Thanks, Eric. You're welcome. It's the game management theme, yeah. a recurring one. I agree with a lot of what uh, what he just said there. I, I I agree that when he says that we were not brilliant over the ninety minutes. I thought the first forty five minutes, uh, it was more case of Tottenham making Manchester United look good than Manchester United really sort of played Tottenham off the park. Tottenham didn't do too much, and it was, of course, you have to score the goals. You still still have to score the goals, and. Um, but it, it's a good assessment. And, and what's interesting about what he says that we didn't deal with the cross. No, we don't deal with the cross. What happens when you don't have Martinez and Baran? We don't have that leadership in, in the center of, of that defense. They're not coming out quick enough. They're not pushing out quick enough. The care is not going to do that. And, and Lindelof is not a natural leader. Uh, Luke Shaw, which I thought was, was excellent today and has been excellent playing in that position is not a natural centre half. So he doesn't have that leadership in taking his team out. And that's been a problem for <coughs> Manchester United. No, when they have defensive problems, it's it's very often that that they allow crosses to come in and they stay in. And so all these rebounds, so as we saw in the first goal, the ball comes out still still in the box. And 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 uh, who scored Poro? So, Poro. 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 So. Poro. Poro scored. Yeah. He had loads of time to hit the ball. He wasn't under pressure because they're too deep. But it, it's, it's, a, it's very good to listen to what he's saying because he's seen the same things, which as a Manchester United fan, I, it makes me happy that he knows it, that he's onto it because he's been very good at, at, at progressing the team and mm. developing the team. And we've said this before, already won trophy. Yep. There's, a, there's an FA Cup final to come in the top four. That's a lot more than I was hoping in my wildest dream before the season. So even though today it's disappointing being 2-0 up, uh, I'm quite happy with the point and I'm even more happy now after I've listened to the manager. OK. I'm a Newcastle lad. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your company. A lot of fun on another significant night in the Premier League from the four of us. It's been some week. We'll see you soon.